Across America, you're listening to the Veterans Impact Show, featuring stories of veterans who continue the mission in their communities with honor, courage, and commitment. Brought to you by Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation and the Texas Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Well, welcome aboard. I'm Jim Blythe, U.S. Navy veteran. Joining me, the number one helicopter pilot I know, Chuck Wright. <laughs> you don't know a lot of helicopter pilots, do you? <laughs> well, actually, I did. I served in a helicopter rescue unit with HC-1. There we go. On the Oriskany during Vietnam. Way back in the day. Way back in the day. And yep. then Mark Liebman is a very dear friend of mine, and he was a, a helicopter rescue pilot who's written some tremendous books, and we've had him on. Uh, numerous times, and I was amazed. And let's I, not forget your friend in California. Oh, yeah. Mike uh, Galderucci, George Galderucci. George Galderucci. Um, I got to tell you, and, and I I watched some of those guys, and we're digressing from where we wanted to go, but I got to tell you, I watched some of those guys, and I got to fly with some of those guys, and it was some of the most amazing when they did the unreps, when they did the rescues. And they brought guys aboard when they transferred people who were injured or had problems yep. from one of the uh, tin cans or one of the smaller ships to our carrier where we had all the medical. An amazing thing, an amazing adventure to fly with. And then you were a pilot. I can imagine what it would be like to fly one of those things. And you told me you practiced on landing <laughs> at one of the most difficult a landing uh, so deal. so a couple things and one Jim does this every week and we forget to uh, we forget to recognize we are working this morning coming to you live from the studios in Frisco Texas with the uh, the famous Frisco water tower uh, as our view out the window but um, I wanted to say good morning and thank you and we're making faces and if you see us doing silly things. That's our uh, Facebook production uh, person, the lovely Miss Diane Blythe. And then running the whole show, quietly behind the scenes, it's almost impossible to get a word in edgewise around him, is uh, Nathaniel Smith and his send podcasts. And by the way, happy birthday, belated birthday. Yeah, a little belated birthday. You'll notice who remembered your birthday. Hey, who caught, a, who caught up with that? The bride. So there, no, I did. Oh, yeah, did. yeah. Oh, I didn't she was that. a day late and a dollar short. Well, because you wouldn't tell me what his birthday was. I'm sorry. I didn't know I was your secretary. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so we diverge a little bit. But I, I, I want to tell this story because it's a pretty funny flying story. So generally speaking, you either land on a carrier and uh, and the uh, they've got the big uh, carriers like the Midway, which I've landed on, the Nimitz, the Lincoln, the Roosevelt, the big uh, nuclear carriers. I have bounced on the Midway, which is now a floating museum in, in San Diego, and if you're out there, it is well worth a visit. But then the uh, Navy also operates smaller carriers. The um, I think they're LPHs now. They've they've yeah. they've done some technical upgrades to them, and they're a better carrier than what I went out on. But we went out on the Peleliu and the Tarawa, so that was a lot of fun. But in our, they call them arcs, they're amphibious ready groups. And so we used to go out with four ships. Now we go out with three. And the smallest was an LST. And these are the ships that you would see. And if you look at a, a picture of Normandy Beach, they're the ships that literally drive right up on the shore. And they're real low hull. They have no business out in deep water. I understand they're yeah, terrible kind of rough. for the guys that are on them. But the interesting thing is all the ships you land on the back. The LST, you land in the middle. Now, you, mean, you mean with all the cranes on both well, sides? Cranes on both sides, yeah, oh, because they're geared to offloading stuff and, and pulling stuff off. So they've got their own built-in cranes. But the landing spot is in the middle, which is the darndest place. So you literally, the, you know, the LST is going through the water, and it's going forward. And you come in at a 90-degree perpendicular angle to it as it's moving forward, and not only moving forward, but it's going up and down side to side. And you're coming in and trying to land on a moving target that's not moving in the same direction you are. And not only that, but you got rotor blades that are going got round and round. And they are, from tip to tip, 80 feet long and 40 feet wide. 
So imagine that much space. I mean, the, the, the length of longer than a semi-tractor trailer, and you're trying to control this landing. And I was, we were in the bar at QB Point at one point, and I talked, was talking to one of the air officers from one of the other ships, and he says, why don't you guys ever come and land on our, other, on our boats? He says, our crew needs the work. You know, they need training. And I went, sure, I'll do it. I'll, you, you get out to sea, and quite frankly, you get a little, it, it gets a little redundant. It gets a little boring. And, uh, until things start happening. It's yeah, going wrong. then it goes just, and it, it, it's all hell breaks I, loose. I was once told flying is 5%, excuse me, 95% sheer boredom and 5% sheer terror. And that's not entirely untrue. Anyway. So we start. I start when I'm I'm taking flights out. I start taking flights onto the other decks. Now the other thing that the other decks would do to say thank you is they would bring us out box lunches. And you know, no offense, we were nothing special on the LHA. But, but by the way, our carrier used to take ice cream to those guys. Oh well, now we never got any ice cream. <laughs> What's the deal with that? Uh -huh. Yeah, you Navy guys live so well. That is one thing that I really love. Man, I, I love Navy Chow. I I I, I loved. It. Anyway, the point I'm getting to is is I developed a reputation for going to these other ships. And the CEO came to me in the ready room one day and Hey Skipper, I hope you're listening out there. Skipper's retired down in San Antonio. Um, Colonel Dave McSorley, uh, big shout out to him. Uh, one of my mentors, uh, great inspiration in my life. Fine Marine. Anyway, he goes, Chuck, I gotta ask. I got I got these uh, I got these junior co-pilots coming to me and you scare the crap out of them landing on an LST because it is it's a little nerve-wracking and I was like yeah well sir I could give you the standard answer I'm challenging myself I'm doing this I'm doing that I'm pushing the limits and I said but the real truth is one of those kids on that LST is going to need an emergency appendectomy one night it might be raining just a little bit and in the back of your mind you're instantly go right. You're actually going to be the aircraft commander on this, and I'm flying with you. And we'd flown several times. We had a great time flying. Uh, but you've got more experience on the LST than anybody else. And he goes, okay, well, I can see the logic that. I said, no, 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 you don't understand, sir. When I come back, you're going to put me in for the Distinguished Flying Cross. It'll get moved down to an air medal, but nobody's getting air medals these days. So I'll, <laughs> I'll come out of this with an air. And he just shook his head and got up and left. So anyway, that's my LS. It's one of my favorite well, flying stories. Between the towers, uh, between the cranes, uh, our landing space. So if I had forty feet of rotor going across, let's say thirty-five feet of rotor going across, uh, probably fifty, sixty feet. It okay, wasn't a lot. You had eighty feet of rotor. I thought you said eighty feet uh, to front 10. to back. Yeah, oh, okay. front to back, side okay. to side, So, because we're coming in and it mattered sideways. But let me make it even worse. When we landed on the LHA, you're, you're trying to maneuver something that's 80 feet long. you got to worry about a space of 80 feet. You have 10 feet of clearance between the helicopter turning in front of you and the helicopter turning in behind you. Yeah. Yeah, I took, uh, I took a fixed-wing guy. We had Harrier guys out my last year. I had one of them uh, functioning as my uh, assistant crew chief. And I literally scared the crap out of him with a normal landing. He was like, oh, my gosh. This oh, yeah. is insane. But you're, what you're talking about is the world's greatest adventure. And that's what the military, first of all, going to boot camp, best thing that ever happened to me. Changed me 100%. Number two, going to sea on the Ariskany and the Hancock with the pilots and, and working on a carrier. It was a great adventure. And going to all the places we went to. Yep was incredible. Got to see the world. Uh, it opened your eyes. I, I've always kicked myself um, that in my military, it's the one thing I tell anybody who's going into the service, I know you want to get into port, you want to go have some drinks, uh, you want to go have some fun, uh, you want to go mess around, but take an opportunity. You're going to places you'll probably never get to see again. Go see some of the culture. And one of the funniest things we set up, and I was thinking about this the other day, there was an article about a baby elephant that had gotten stuck. And the mama elephant was just going nuts. And if you don't think elephants have personality, you've never oh, been around yeah. that. They have incredible personalities. 
Um, so anyway, that was the story, and they got the baby elephant out, and the mama elephant was all happy. I mean, you could you could see the joy in their face. But they took us out, and it was as the elephants get older. They use the elephants in in Thailand to actually haul things, especially mm-hmm. timber. They they they've got these great hardwoods there, um, teak and uh, mahogany and things of that nature. And they uh, oh, am I boring you over there? <laughs> I'm getting that. Come on, hurry up. Hey, it's our show. We're going off on some tangents today. But uh, the big thing but, we're talking about yeah, is you gonna interrupt what, the story too? Okay, yeah, what a great Yes, deal. what the opportunities are to see the world. And anyway, the, the, the moral story is, is the older elephants get retired, and they train the younger elephants. And there was this baby elephant out there. And, oh, my Lord. Like a small child trying to get everybody's attention running around. Yeah. It was so funny, but you realize these are creatures with personalities. I mean, I've seen dogs that don't have personalities like some of these elephants. Yeah. So anyway, we do need to move on. Um, Interesting news today. What we're talking about, what we're talking about, and a lot of people say, well, I don't want my kid to be in the military, or I'm scared of the military. Oh. There, it, it is the world's greatest adventure, and only, only about 10% of the military, the infantry, the O3s, the grunts, mo- that goes into combat. We're all trained, but boy, let me tell you, there's so many fabulous jobs, and what we used to think of the glass ceiling just got shattered for the Marine Corps, and we've got this up for Facebook. Lieutenant General Michael Langley, who is now general, a four-star general, and is headed to Africa to head up the U.S. forces in Africa. The first African American. The first no, African American. No, 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 no. See, now you, you worry about that, and 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 as a military brat, okay, okay, we didn't understand color. We don't care about color. That general, he's a marine. And that's that's one of the things we love about him. But what's really important about him is he is the first University of Texas at Arlington grad to become a four-star general in any branch of the military. He is a local boy, and uh, we love him for that. Absolutely. Boy, does he come across as (laughs) hard-ass marine. (laughs) But the main thing is, Chuck, this is a signal to young men and women. There is diversity, there is opportunity, there is a chance for real advancement. There is a chance to have a great life that you can start off with the military. I saw that as a military brat and then as a Marine officer, I saw that so often. If you want to get into a world, we can learn, and the whole, the whole purpose of the show is Charlie Mike which is continue the mission. It's taking those leadership principles that so many learned in the military and applying them and making our nation a better place. And let me tell you, we were diversity in the military long before diversity was cool. But the word you said, and I want to focus on that word, is opportunity. Um, There's a great line in the first Top Gun movie where they walk into the bar, and this is going to come across a little sexist, but deal with it. Um, and Goose looks at uh, Maverick and goes, this is what I love, a target-rich environment. Well, let me tell you something, young ladies out there. You want to talk about an opportunity to have career success, to be around the kind of men that you want to be around. I mean, let's face it. We, you know, I, I, was, I was in high school thinking about the white picket fence. I wanted to meet that girl that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. Now, it took me a long time. Thank God, 20 years ago, I met her. Uh, Actually, a little more. It's We're rapidly coming up on 21 years ago when I met Michelle. All right. But, oh, we got to go to a break. We got to go to a break for our radio station. Facebook, hang on. We'll still be with you. Facebook, we're going to continue the conversation. This is Jim Blythe and Chuck Wright. You're listening to the Veterans Impact Show. And we're so glad to be with you and just have fun this morning. Kick back, have another cup this, of coffee. This is going to be a, a, a fun show. Absolutely. But subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like us on Facebook, please. And come on aboard Let us know with you're us out there. And send us an email. Yeah. So this is Jim and Chuck. We'll be right back after these words from all of our partners. This is the Veterans Impact Show. This is your show. And this is where we try and help you plug in tune in and be a part we'll be right back i 
Okay, are we still live with Facebook? There we go. Chuck, cool. that was so much fun. It was. It and, was. and where are some of the great places you got to go? Oh, my you? gosh. I um, I got the Marine Corps history tour of World War II. I was on the USS Peleliu mm-hmm. for the 40th anniversary of the Battle of Peleliu. What an amazing place. And as you're flying over, because you can see down... 75, 100 feet. The water is crystal clear. Uh, Peleliu is also a great Palau. Uh, if you read about it in the dive magazines, it's a great diving spot. Uh, but you can see. I mean, they didn't do anything. They just left them like they've done in a lot of places. There's old Amtrak's down there. There's tanks. There's uh, You go around the island, and they warn you, don't pick things up because there's unexploded ordnance all over the place, gun positions. You can go see all of it. Now, this is the part that will that will boggle your mind. There was a small airfield. Uh, Peleliu is a chain of islands. There was a small airfield on the island just south of where we were. We were just off the main island. And we flew over it just to check it out. There were three World War II warbirds sitting on the runway, rusting out. Oh. They just left them there. It was amazing how much stuff we got rid of after World War II. So I got to tell you, I got to tell you, those airplanes today would bring more than what they cost to build them back mm. back then. I mean, to tell you, and right now, my son Ashley and all of our friends are up at Oshkosh, Wisconsin. The greatest flying of all kinds of civilian aviation, and there's going to be a ton. A ton of yep. warbirds, everything from the t- Harvard T-6 Texan, uh, the T-34, the which you probably, yep. ch- it's a beach I got over 100 hours in a T-34. Yeah. A teeny-weeny, as we called it. Yeah, and what a great opportunity, what a great thing. And you know what? Not everybody's going to be a pilot, uh, but I got to be a flight crew. It's, it is it is amazing. Uh, last year we had a reunion of our squadron. And it is amazing the camaraderie in a squadron, and really the camaraderie in a lot of units. And uh, talking about places I went: Hong Kong, Thailand, Japan, Okinawa, Korea, Australia. Oh, Australia was wonderful. And you so, came back, and we came back. Yeah, oh, almost <laughs> didn't. That's an interesting story. Not I was not, not, not for this, for this show. Not for this one. But uh, we thought about it. So places like Guam, uh, Guam is Hawaii. What Hawaii was, although I hear it's being taken over too, just overrun. Um, but it's just it's beautiful, and it's just it's a chance to see the world. Um, I think about that every time I spent almost a year in Quantico, Virginia, and I realized there is so much history there. There's so many things to see and do. And I was wasting weekends at the O Club. Yeah, I so my priorities imagine. were yeah, in the wrong place. I got to tell you, one of the things on our ships when we pulled in, whether it was the Philippines, Japan, Singapore, Hong Kong, um, we always had all kinds of things set up to go and do. But the chaplain also set up deals to where we could go work on orphanages we could go be part of mission trips and get out into the culture and into the community i met the british royal marines in singapore had the time of my life with those guys (laughs) i met the the crew of the hms diane in hong kong had the time of my life all right let's go we'll be right back on to terrestrial radio so thank you stay with us facebook Welcome back to the Veterans Impact Show. Thanks to our great sponsors, Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation and the Texas Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Now, let's continue this conversation. Man, we're on board and we're having fun and Chuck's telling war stories. And <laughs> oh, I'm just going to get off of those. Yeah, we got it. We, no, I think that's fun because it tells people and not only how much fun we had in the places we got to go, but the opportunities, you know, you were a helicopter pilot. I was in maintenance administration with the Navy. You were a Marine. We got to see and go and do and learn so much. And let's come so back many... to the word you used in that first segment, and let's talk about opportunity. You bet. And this is really where the military creates. And, and, and I'm, I'm pushing this out for, for our younger listeners who are debating 
the path they want to take in life, but I'm also saying this to our employers. Let me tell you something. If you've got an application from a young man or young woman who's just gotten out of the military, I can tell you a few things about them. They are self-starters. They have learned how to get things done. They are the kind of people, basically you tell them once they understand how to do it, but more importantly, if you tell them what you are trying to accomplish, they're not going to run to you every five minutes and go, oh, I've got this challenge, I've got that challenge. They're going to say, this is what the mission is, we need to do this to make it happen, and they're going to make it happen. They are so valuable. They may not have the exact technical skills that you need today, but what you need tomorrow is their leadership and their self-starting and their ability to find solutions. These people, um, and I'm going I'm to go back, I'm going to tell another war story. I got out of flight school and I spent three weeks in Austin doing, it was TAD, temporary additional duties, but recruiting duties. And the office said, hey, Chuck, we can't figure out how to get lawyers in here. And the... Uh, kind of out-of-the-box thinker that I am, I went over to the law library and started hanging out, and I'd meet people studying for the bar, and I'd ask them, what do you want to do? Oh, I want to be a trial lawyer. Because that's kind of the, for many lawyers, that's kind of the epitome of law. And I said, well, tell me a little bit about your career path. Oh, you know, I'm going to go clerk for some firm for five or six years. And I said, it's going to take you five or six years to get into court? Yeah, probably. That's kind of the downside. I said, what if I can offer you an opportunity to get into court damn near day one. And they kind of looked at me and said, how am I going to do that? And I said, you're going to log more experience in five or six years actually practicing law than all of your friends that are interning and clerking and whatever this other stuff is. And we wound up pulling, we pulled two out of them while, out of there while I was there, but to come to work for the judge advocacy uh, group. JAG. JAG Corps. Yeah. Yeah, it's group or well, whatever it is. We just call them Jags, and Jag lawyers, man. We had we had six great ones when I went through basic school, but the opportunities to go and do something. I have a friend of mine's son who's um, had he gone to college, he'd just now be graduating, but he went into the army, and he is now commanding a Bradley fighting vehicle. He has he has four, three or four other people who work for him. Well, let's t you were talking about that in the Bradley, and we were talking about attorneys. Most people don't even think about military having yeah. attorneys. Yeah, we got a bunch but, of it. Boy, you talk about drones. You talk about the latest technology yeah. in flying. You talk about the latest technology in cyber. Uh, the military has it, whether it's the Air Force, Navy, well, the Marine Corps. You know, you guys still carry rifles. That's a joke. But uh, I got to tell you, well, too, my friend. There are yes, <laughs> there are so many. Put a cap in your backside, boy. <laughs> yeah, so many opportunities to not only learn great technical skills but learn the leadership. I, and let's go to the let's go to the other end of that spectrum, and let's come back to General Langley, who will be the first four-star African American Marine, and he muddle all those words all you want. I look at him and I said, Marine. He's just a Marine. Uh, but let's you can talk bet about he is incredibly qualified because the Marine Corps didn't... Talk, talk a little bit about his resume. He pulled oh, his resume man. up. His resume is amazing. He was in Afghanistan. I mean, if you go Google this guy, you kind of go, holy cow. And all of the things, I mean, he's got more service medals. He's got more fruit salad on his chest. Anybody I've ever seen? Uh, well, not quite. But I got to tell you, he's a great man and his leadership skills. And it's such an incentive because let me tell you something Marine Corps doesn't promote the man who isn't the best. No. And no, there are only 88 generals in all the Marine Corps. All right. We're going to take another break for our radio partners. Thank you in South Texas for being with us. Thank you so much, David for providing us that opportunity to work with South Texas and out in California. Thank you and all the stations that carry us. We really appreciate it. So send what, us an What email. do we call our friends in South Texas? Uh, that's the No Bull Record. The No, no Bull Radio Network. Network, yeah. 
All right, we'll be right back after these words from all of our partners. This is the Veterans Impact Show. We haven't done this yet. Oh, we're getting there. We're getting, getting there. We've got a couple more segments to go. You're having too much fun. I am. I'm having how, way too how much, much fun. How much caffeine did, did you get no, a double-double? Double? Double? No, I just started. I don't even put the espresso in it, man. I just, I'm a black coffee, and uh, I just like hanging out Boy, with you guys. I got to tell you, this is a gunpowder day. I'm loving it. I'm having fun. <laughs> yeah, and we do. We've got a couple of other things that we need to jump into. We wanted to focus on General Langley a little bit. Um Mainly because he's an outstanding Marine, and you said he is taking over to the African Command? African Command, all U.S. forces in Africa. So to explain to those who aren't familiar with it, we have the world break it, broken up effectively into districts. Um, and a lot of this now, the military is starting to finally get away from its parochialism a little bit, and you're seeing more and more joint service. And so he doesn't just command Marines. He commands the Army, the Navy, and everybody that's in that region is under his command. And I apologize. I don't know exactly what that region is. But it's smart. Well, it's Africa. There we go. And there are bases in Africa that I didn't even realize we had that are there. And this is an important part of the world as far as I'm concerned about developing relationships yep. and and building um man i have met so many people i got to speak to a a businessmen's christian group and they were all kenyan in nairobi uh from nairobi kenya they were all from like mm -hmm. central africa there were lawyers doctors professors oh yeah there's some real talent and there i was like wow yeah. um Chuck, I think it's 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 so important that we say, young men and women, one more time, take a look at the opportunities. And parents, take a look at how your son or daughter could get a real, real boost up in life by being part of the military. If you got oh, it's education. yeah, and a great free education. But for so many, when I was 18 years old, man, I I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I went to college, and it was a disaster. Once I went through the military, I was straight A's. I graduated <laughs> yeah. with straight A's. And I got to tell you, there is something about the military, and, and, and if we can use one word, we were talking about opportunity before, but it is the discipline that comes out of it. Both discipline as a group, but discipline as an individual that reshapes you, that reforms you, that makes you, that helps turn you into the best version of you that we can be. And we're kind of a, we're kind of doing the recruiting show um, because it's important. It's it really is. important. And we're we've become like the reformed alcoholic. We've become the true believer, uh, and 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 we do. But the whole purpose of the show, when we go back to the concept of Charlie Mike, which is continue the mission, our entire show, and we're going to jump into our, in our next couple of segments, and we're going to talk about some people. I don't know what that means. 30 seconds. Oh, 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 please. Are we going to do, uh, yeah. we're gonna do that or Scott next? Yeah, let's do this. Okay. Um, All right, Facebook, we're coming back. We're going to be right to, back. Right back onto our um, broadcast, live broadcast. This is so much fun. We're having a good time this I morning. I hope everybody's enjoying it. And when you get a chance to hear it down in South Texas, send us a note. Welcome back to the Veterans Impact Show. Thanks to our great sponsors, Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation and the Texas Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Now, let's continue this conversation. Welcome back. You're on board with Jim Blythe and Chuck Wright. We're talking about veterans and doing great things. We talked about uh, Michael Langley, general, who's now head of the all of the military forces in Africa. What a great opportunity. What a great man. We've been talking about the, the University incentive. of Texas at Arlington Grand. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. He's a local young man. And we're talking about the great opportunities in the military. But one of the great things is for veterans to participate, be a part of great, great things. One of the best that you're heavily involved in and that I've enjoyed helping with reads across America. 
Tell yes. us a little bit we about are, that one. We are currently doing our Christmas in July promotion, and this is an international program um, that has gone 3,100 different cemeteries last year. Two and a half million wreaths were placed on the headstones of our fallen veterans. And the motto of, of the program is remember, honor, teach. And the teach is really, we talk about kids a lot on this show. When we talk about teach, we want you to bring your kids and your grandkids because there's no better way, and you're certainly not going to get it in today's civics class, to talk about what our veterans have done and what they have meant. Um, and so what we're doing, it's $15 to sponsor a wreath. We've got the Wreaths Across America page, the DFW Wreaths page on Facebook up. And you can see our Texas flag there for our uh, Facebook fo folks. There is a program at all four national cemeteries in the state of Texas. I think we're pretty much covered right now across the nation at all of our national cemeteries. I need to ask that question. Uh, I didn't ask enough questions. I was actually interviewed on the uh, on the radio. Uh, Reese Cross America had, does their own show similar to what this is, and but. We are also at all four of the state cemeteries in the state of Texas, and we'll talk about that a little more, because the, uh, the people, the office that runs that is the uh, General Land Office of Texas. They run our state cemeteries. They're going to run our state nursing homes. And we're going to talk about that in a future show, but it's very, very important, and that race will be very important. But we want to go, don't want to go too far into politics. But you can find us at DFW Wreaths. On Facebook, you can find us at DFWreaths, all one word, dot com. Uh, that's our web. There we go. We got our uh, picture of our web page up. And you can go there. And you know what our ask is? It's really simple. Sponsor one wreath today. And, and if you can do it, one wreath between now and November. It is always a challenge. Um, the DFW Cemetery, absolutely beautiful location in DFW. It's out off Mountain Creek Lake. Uh, it's out by the old uh, NAS Dallas that a lot of our uh, longtime DFW people may or may not remember. It's over by Dallas Baptist University, you which bet. is a beautiful, beautiful campus. Beautiful campus. I might be. It, it is almost as pretty. It's not as new, but it's almost as pretty as SMU. And SMU is one of the the prettiest campuses I've ever been on. I'll say that you can make all the Highland Park and rich people jokes you want. They may all be true. I don't know. But that is a gorgeous campus. <laughs> well, I like TCU as well. But I went to SMU for a year and a half. And that was one. That was a great experience. Um, but I did graduate from the University of the Texas. The University of Texas. Hook them horns, folks. All right, for all my Aggie and Naval Academy friends out there. Let's, let's move on. Oh, well. You had another th a person you wanted to talk about. This well, let me, let me finish this real quick. Okay. Let me finish this real quick. Because the other thing we want to do, and I think the face the, the website says it's wrong, it's the 17th of December this year. We invite everybody to come out that morning. Please be there by 930. Parking is a real chore. But we invite you to come out, place a wreath on the graveside of a veteran. Say their name out loud, and trust me, the kids absolutely love this. But read that gravestone. Remember them, honor them, and teach those kids. In many cases, you're going to find the parents in the family, and you're going to hear a story. Oh, my gosh. But it's not always, you know, those who died in combat, because there are many, many, many. No, this is friends. all veterans. Yeah, that, that are there. All right. So you want to move over. We're going to – oh, sorry, I thought I heard music there for a second. Let's nope. hop over. We're going to talk about Scott Husing. Um, and I was trying to find his page. This was actually an interview, and he has a page, and I thought I had shared it. Um, yeah, let's not, uh, let's not bring the volume up on that. My friend Scott Husing runs – not only is he a Marine – He's a retired Marine major. He was a Mustang. He was prior enlisted. Um, but he wrote the probably the definitive Marine Corps book of the 21st century, which is Echo and Ramadi. And it's a book about small unit leadership 
It's a book about his relationship with his Marines uh, as they were going through some of the most grueling fighting um, during the global war on terror. There he is right now, and he has created an organization called Save the Brave, and he is currently road tripping around America and on his motorcycle, and he's riding on his Harley. And if you want to meet him, this Monday, he's going all across America. He's got all the tour stops on their webpage. But Monday at 4 o'clock, he's going to be at American Harley, which is in Corinth on I-35. And then at about 6, 6.15, he's moving over to Marty B's over on the west side of Flower Mound. It's one of my favorite spots. It's just a little hard to get to sometimes. Um, and Marty B's is a great spot, and he's going to be out, and it's an opportunity to meet him. He is quite the character. Um, he became a friend years ago. Uh, we have a lot of fun for him. But one of the things that he's trying to do is he's trying to create awareness to help end a veteran suicide. And that's a program near and dear to our Oh, hearts. absolutely. We had dinner uh, Thursday night with Ginger Simonson and Cy and um, – Charlene Johns talking about these issues. One of the newest things that's come out is a new suicide prevention hotline. It's no longer the long telephone number. It's 988. It's that simple. 988. 988. Finally, we're starting to get some progress. 988 suicide prevention hotline. And Chuck, it's not just about veterans who have this problem. It's a national epidemic. We've seen things in teenagers. We've seen things in, in civilians. Teen suicide has spiked up sharply. It's amazing. And one of the things that I've learned is the military leads the way. The military and the VA is so focused on this, and we're focused with the military peer network, with the VA, with everything they're doing to try and prevent that and bring that down. The One Tribe, that organization, yep. uh, Jacob Schick, and those great people, this is important. So again, you got somebody who's stressed out, who's having a hard time, who's struggling, 988. And then be a military peer. We want you to get the training. You know, an interesting thing, uh, at the dinner, Charlene said, you know what? <clears throat> They teach in Seattle CPR to anybody and everybody. Mm -hmm. They have the highest rate of people who have CPR training. If you had a heart attack in Seattle, you'd have a better chance of survival any place in the United States. Well, military peer network training and suicide prevention, if we can get more and more and more people doing that, we could save teenagers, we could save veterans, we could save people who are just burned out and burned up. Now, I'm going to give you another interesting fun fact. There are psychologically, I've read this, I am I'm by no means an expert at this, there are an incredible number of similarities between our suicide victims, because almost all of our, and our mass shooters, and our mass shooters are almost always suicidal. Yeah. They just well, they, want to take a whole bunch of other people with them. They want that 15 minutes of fame moment as they go out, as they're angry at the world. But the... And a lot of it is just the personality of someone. Do they want to externalize this, or do they just want to internalize this? But it's those same things. It's those same indicators. Um, and sad to say, and this is going to sound horrible. Uh, you know, my son just graduated from high school. My wife and I were very plugged into his wife. But you read about the Uvalde shooter. You read about this kid that was just the Chicago kid. It's like, you want to go... What in the world was his father thinking? I mean, this kid screamed for attention. Pay attention to me. Pay attention. And he kept going more and more and more extreme. And the dad was so worried about his political career, he didn't pay any attention to him. Chuck, that's one of the biggest problems we've got. And that's where things like military peer network training oh, yeah. starts putting in. And then my, my very, very close friend, Travis Wortham, just wrote a book and if you go to Travis Wortham on Facebook he just wrote a great book he was the superintendent of a halfway house for teenage boys coming out of the Texas juvenile prison system oh man I taught for him for almost 20 plus years a program we put together 
Travis has written a great book. Um, it's amazing. We're, we need to have Travis come in and talk about that because it's about what's going on with our kids. And basically, in many cases, it's absent family or no family. Or well, some you, of the you've stories. got kids that are plugged into their cell phones. And it, now here's the irony. I can reach out to a thousand people in a day on my Facebook page. I thought I would want to, but that's another story. And yet, it's social media, it's the internet that is making us less connected, not more connected. Yeah. And it is this absolute conundrum that we've got to figure out. All right. One of the things that I like about what we've been doing and what you got me started when you first helped me get started with this program in 2015, <clears throat> you introduced me to Jim Dolan. Yep. Heroes on the Water. Here's a guy, ex Air Force Academy graduate, a 130 pilot, football he, player to Air Force. Football yeah. player. Yeah. He basically loved kayak fishing. There are now kayak fishing chapters of heroes on the water all over the world all over the world taking guys kayak fishing equest they do and work with horses and they're finding that that people involved with horses and rex king and what they're doing up in decatur and so many people and getting involved getting involved with people who are doing something bigger and better than you are yeah. just like rex and Donna King, just like um, what's gotten started here with Scott Hosing. Yeah, I gotta so that was you. his program. He's uh, based out of Temecula, California. Um, Save the Brave is very much dedicated to that. And it's, we talk about all these organizations, and the one thing I wanted to throw out since you brought up Heroes on the Water, which is a great, fun organization. Heroes on the Water is one of the things I loved about them the first time I went out. It's dedicated to families. It's getting families to help connect. Um, speaking of which, I actually met, it was the first day I was out at Reese Cross America, and it was the coldest day we ever had out there, but I got to talk to um, a couple and she was literally bragging about Jeff Hensley, who used to be the uh, veteran director oh, yeah. of, uh, of EQuest, uh, the Hero Hooves for Heroes program, um, how sh he literally saved their marriage. And it's finding ways to get people to plug into each other. You get a family out, you get the kids out, and you put them in a kayak, and you let them go fish. Oh, my gosh. It's so much fun. Well, and there's so many veteran service organizations. We had Lynn Toomer on last week, who's the commander for the state, state of Texas for, for VFW. VFW. Yeah. And there's American Legion. There's VFW. There's Vietnam Veterans. There's all kinds of great groups that you have something in common. You've got a military background or you've got a family. I mean, there's all If you're listening members. to this, if you're hearing the sound of our voice... <laughs> and you want to know what organizations are in your area, put a note out there for us on Facebook. Just pop on our Facebook page and say, you know, hey, I'm in, um, I'm in Dilly, Texas, and i got family down in Dilly, Texas, so I can say this. Um, I bet they don't dilly-dally. They don't dilly-dally down there. No, they dilly-dally a lot. Nobody wow, moves wow, very wow, rapidly. Dilly, on that one. In, uh, in Dilly, Texas, does not move very rapidly. I will tell you that. And it is. Uh, but tell, tell us where you are. Tell us what you're interested in. I will help you find. It's one of the things that I do for the state is I am actively trying to connect more and more veteran service organizations. And, and one we haven't talked about, I talked to Mia Garcia, who runs uh, Combined Arms, which is also the Texas Veterans Network. Uh, we're going to get her on the show. You'll be fascinated at another I, Marine I tell and you, what she's doing. And if you want to do something exciting, join Team Rubicon. Oh, join, join, join the Mission Continues. Mission yeah. Continues, Team All Red, right. White, and Blue. We're going to be back in a minute after these words. And if you're in South Texas, if you're in California, and you want to know where to plug in, give us a call because we'll get you plugged in to be able to be part of the greatest fraternity, sorority in the world. Yep. Military veteran community. We lead the way. And if you don't believe me, look back in history because 
Now, veterans have led the way in this nation. So, Chuck, this is a ball. We're going to wrap this up in just a minute. Stay with us, please, on Facebook. This is the Veterans Impact Show. Jim and Chuck are here with you and for you. Oh, there we go. There it is for all our Facebook listeners. <clears throat> Guys, this is too much fun. We are having a really, really good time. I'm not real sure what KSU means, but oh, uh, kickstands up. Yeah, um, <laughs> took me a second because I'm not a motorcycle guy. I think that's great. I used to be a motorcycle guy, and, and there are times that I am uh, uh, sorry I I stopped riding until I had my son, and he asked me about riding, and I said no, sir. <laughs> well. I had a, uh, for a short time, I had a um, Yamaha Virago, and that was a screaming machine. And I always wanted to have a BMW because... I thought a Virgo was a uh, Zodiac sign. Mm, no. <laughs> but I got to tell you, man, it, it was a lot of fun. And there are all kinds of great veterans motorcycle groups who go um, oh, yeah. in parades and do fa fabulous Rides. things. I tell you, one of the things, and, and some of our listeners remember, I was part of the Frisco's uh, Gold Star Family Monument Project. Uh, very proud uh, of being able to do that and our contribution both to Gold Star Families and to the city of Frisco. But and we hadn't planned this, but I think it was Mary Bush, who was one of the Gold Star Family members on our committee, had a connection. I think it was might have been Jennifer. Anyway, we got the Patriot Guard to come out, and they invited them, and they just kind of said, "Chuck, we didn't ask you about it. We just we did it." And I, hey, it sounds great. They made such a terrific contribution to it. Um, they're in a lot of the pictures that you can see. You can go to the North Star uh, Gold Star Family Monument page on uh, Facebook. You can see a bunch of the pictures. My friends uh, Rick Irving. And Myers Jackson took some phenomenal pictures. Uh, one of them is my absolute favorite picture in the world. It's it's me and Woody Williams. Um, there is, and if you'll bring that page up. Oh, that's or, a beautiful monument. Yeah, that's yeah. a beautiful monument. This is six state. of the Medal of Honor recipients, and I am honored to say three of them I have met uh, as they are paying tribute to Woody Williams lying in state. Um, at the Capitol Rotunda. Uh, just an amazing, amazing experience. Um, Woody was an incredible, incredible man. And actually, if you'll bounce over to my page, I'm going to show off a picture that I absolutely love. Go up to my profile picture. There it is. And if you'll highlight that, you'll notice this one is actually signed. Yeah. That's Woody Williams and I. And it was funny. This picture, when my wife saw it for the first time, put my wife in tears. She said, I knew Woody know who you were, but I never knew how much you guys genuinely cared about each other. And, and let me tell you something. I am not unique by any means. No, Rex King. Is Woody might, yeah. Rex King was part of his organization for longer, much longer than I was. Um, but if you knew Woody at all, uh, he just was somebody that you embraced. What a great man. 98 years young when we lost him. Um, well, Chuck, tell you what let's do. We're going to be wrapping up this show, so let's take a break for half a second and let everybody know this is the Veterans Impact Show. We're going to be wrapping up and bringing this into the dock in just a minute. We want you to send us an email. Uh, look us up. We're all here. Call us. We've got some great fans. And subscribe to us on YouTube. That's important, right? Follow us on All Facebook. Right, here subscribe we go. to us on We're YouTube. We're coming back. Welcome back to the Veterans Impact Show. Thanks to our great sponsors, Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation and the Texas Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Now, let's continue this conversation. Oh, Chuck, we've had so much fun telling <laughs> war stories and talking about people, talking about people that we have known, we have met at VSOs and getting plugged in and tuned in and being part of it. People um, that are living, Charlie Mike. Oh, they yeah. They are continuing the mission. People that are incredible. And Diane and I went to a dinner at a VFW because I'm a member, 
And I'm sitting across from a guy that I know who's really a tremendous leader, retired uh, Army colonel, and he introduces his, to his dad. And his dad was Brigadier General Boggins, who was a Tuskegee Airman. Oh, my gosh. And he flew in Vietnam, and he flew in Korea. And I started asking about and talking to him. Here is a man of history. And then I said, well, when I was at SMU in 1966, Martin Luther King came, and I got to meet him. And he goes, and he tells me the guy's nickname. He grew up. His father and Martin Luther King's father were close friends. And to hear the history, yeah. to meet a man who was at Brigadier General Tuskegee Airmen, and I have met people. I knew a man who had flown off of Tinian, World War II. I met men who were in Korea. I met men who were, obviously, I was in Vietnam. They were doing different things so, in Vietnam. So for those who don't know, Tinian was a very small island, uh, not far from Guam, where we flew B-29s as we were doing our raids on Tokyo, trying to bring World War II to a close. And Diane's father was a B-24 pilot who flew oh, wow. the plane to, to Italy. And right now, again, a plug up in Oshkosh. My son is up there in Oshkosh with our great friends, David Nazim and, and others, enjoying the association flying the biggest one i think in the world yeah it's huge oshkosh is, is huge so before we jump and uh, bring this into the dock i one more plug for our friend scott Husing of save the brave monday he is going to be at american eagle harley davidson at 4 30 um and then he is going to kick stands up at 5 30 so he won't be there long we're going to head over to Marty B's. Uh, we're going to have some drinks. We're going to have some food. We're going to have some fun. Marty B's is a great location. But Scott Husing of Save the Brave, he is riding cross country. Um, well, I, to, we're going to veteran awareness one mile at a time. Unless I have to go veteran help suicide. a client out. There I'll, we go. We'll be there. Cool. We love it. Chuck, again, what we're saying is the opportunities in the military are incredible. The camaraderie afterwards and being part of a military elite family, that is so important. Take a look at the military if you're a young man and woman trying to figure out what you're going to do. And parents, this is a great place for your kids to get a tremendous education and a tremendous opportunity. Chuck, as we close this up, talking about all of these wonderful things and places we've been, people we've met, what we've done, never would have had it. If I hadn't have gone and lifted my right hand and said, I swear to uphold. I have never regretted it. I can remember, and I mentioned before I was a military brat. I can remember my mother when I was in probably middle school talking about, she goes, we meet people all the time. And they hate it, and they hate it, and they hate it when they're in, and it's this, and it's that, and it's Mickey Mouse, and there's a whole lot of other words I could use. But they get out, and man. Oh, yeah. yeah All right. Nice. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, Chuck, and thank you, Nathaniel, and thank you, Diane, and thank you, Facebook. I want to close with a prayer. Dearest Lord, we are so thankful for your prayers, your, your protection of our active duty military, our first responders who are standing there to protect us and take care of us. Thank you for protecting them. Thank you for watching over them, and thank you for their families. Thank you, God, for our veterans who are continuing to serve and continuing the mission and being part of this community and guide and help those who need help, who have suffered. Thank you, God, for so very much. We really, really, really appreciate and love you. Thank you in your holy name. Amen. Chuck, this has been just too much fun today. We're just kind of hanging out and telling stories. And drinking. It wasn't a real formal... Uh... Real formal day, but that's okay. But drove in, Diane a little crazy. In two weeks, two I've weeks. got the Marine Corps Marine of the Year. Yep. Ken Watterson. And I think we're going to have some more great words from some of our uh, political leaders, some of our BSO leaders. So stay with us. Join us again. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Jump on Facebook. Friend us. And Absolutely. share. Share this program. Because we're here to serve. We're here to serve you. Thank you for being part of the Veterans Impact Show. This is Chuck Wright and Jim Blythe. Thank you again.